To be completely honest, I'm dead tired and pretty busy, so this video is going to be brief. When Gaijin said they were going to add volumetric shells, I got a really bad feeling in my stomach. Everyone else seemed to think it was a positive change overall, but I didn't buy it. If Gaijin is saying they're not sure people will like it, that's an obvious red flag. Now, it's been a while since it was added, and my suspicions have only been confirmed. Volumetric shells have brought a lot of downsides, and practically no benefits to balance them out. Of course, the most obvious issue is the massive buff it gave to tanks with very small weak spots. For some tanks, this made them a viable option, when before they were basically just punching bags. However, it also made vehicles that didn't need a protection buff even stronger. Tanks like the Sherman Jumbo, Object 279, and KV-1. The one frontal weak spot you could exploit when facing the Jumbo is now incredibly unreliable. The 279's weak spot, its turret ring, can't be exploited at all anymore. Then there's that cool little quirk when you hit where two plates join, so it completely stops the shell. This is most commonly seen in two areas, old cast armor plates and sponsons. If you shoot at a target's side, and the round is a little too close to the bottom of the sponson, just pray that the enemy was dumb enough not to notice, so you can get a second shot off. It's not exactly good gameplay to have your shot do nothing simply because you happen to aim where two plates join. This could be partially fixed by moving all vehicles to volumetric armor, but that would take a lot of work. And Gaijin hasn't shown they're willing to stop adding new stuff in order to vastly improve the old. Components are now more likely to stop rounds as well. On the T-64A, for example, the driver's periscope can now eat entire Sabo rounds. One thing I haven't seen people talking about is how volumetric shells are more likely to get caught by the odd hitbox. You know how annoying it is to pop around the edge of a building or boulder, only for the hitbox to extend like a foot past the actual object, blocking your shot, with volumetric shells, it's been happening a lot more often. The most annoying thing is when you're trying to line up a shot on someone's turret or mantlet, and it hits the barrel, doing absolutely no damage to anything. For large diameter shells like tow missiles, this is incredibly common and frustrating, and it makes turret wiggling an even more effective tactic. At least volumetric shells are more realistic, right? You'd think so, but no. There's a reason why things like bow machine guns or turret rings were either removed or made less visible. Even things like cutouts for optics or coaxial machine guns can be exploited. There's a pretty famous example of this, the M26 Pershing named Fireball. Fireball was shot in the mantlet by a Tiger-1. Normally, the shot wouldn't have penetrated, but it struck the coaxial machine gun port, allowing the shell to pass through. Both the gunner and loader were killed. KV-1s were famous for having their turret rings disabled by shells in the gap between the turret and the whole roof. So much so, that a new turret was designed for the KV-1S that removed this weak spot. So not only do volumetric shells not work properly, they're not even an accurate representation of how shells behave against armor. Being able to pixel hunt weak spots was a legitimate skill. Now if you encounter some of the tanks I mentioned earlier head on, your best hope is to try and hit their barrel directly so it breaks. That way you can maybe get around to their side before they repair. Like most changes Gaijin makes these days, it only serves to make the game more frustrating. Anyway, that's my take on it. I don't know how the majority feels, so leave your feedback down below, and I'll see if I can pass it on to Gaijin. As always, hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you on the next one.